Is that a bird? Is that a plane? No, this is John making patches and pigments. This is called Keys of Steel. Yeah, it sounds much less intimidating than the name does, right? Keys of Steel, then you hear this. Yeah, so really this this patch, I kind of want to show you more so a technique, but if you really like the patch, you can always get it for free. So let's dive into this here. Let's turn off our effects here, the utility engine. Let's turn that off. So really the magic is kind of happening in this first engine here. So it sounds like a bell kind of, it sounds metallic-y, right? Steel is metal, so that's kind of the, the idea where the name came from. So right here in basic waveforms, we're really just using a triangle wave, and you might see this little doohickey there, and you're like, what is that? So that's some frequency modulation. So we turn this down here, you'll see like a regular triangle wave, right? So let's undo that. So basically what's happening is on this frequency mod, I've turned this to 0.236 to basically begin with, and this is getting modulated by this second envelope here. So the modulator is gonna be this tune on ratio and the amount's gonna be 12 and it's gonna be a sine wave. So what's happening here is on envelope number two, it's really a very short envelope. So it's one millisecond attack that decays very quick at 273 milliseconds, no sustain, and then the release 100 milliseconds. The attack curve zero, the decay curve negative 13.5. Now this is an important knob to really kind of hone in how much we want that to sound like, right? So what's happening is every time we hit a note, this is this envelope number two is triggering this knob here, as you can see, to really, really get a lot of that frequency modulation going to create that metallic metal type of, of texture, that timbre. That sounds to us like a bell. Right, so that's kind of the thought process for that one right there. So next up, we're adding a little bit of unison here at two voices of unison, the detuning 2.21% and the stereo all the way to 100%. And the chorus tuning is going to be up 24 because for these type of like plucky, metallic-y kind of key, keys of steel sound, we want to kind of get a really high pitch sound. So up 24 semitones or two octaves. So that's basically how this initial sound is gonna be created. So moving on from there, so we have kind of a keys of steel, but we also wanna simulate something that's striking the keys. Maybe it's our fingers, maybe there's a hammer hitting it, maybe there's a pick, uh, who knows what, something needs to hit this string, right? Or this key of steel. Or it can kind of sound like a hang drum, kind of, maybe. So with that being said, let's go to the utility engine and then turn this on here. So we have this white noise here, and this is going to be simulating that sound. So if we turn engine one off, we just get something kind of like that, right? Just really like kind of a quick burst of noise. And this right here is going to be modulated by envelope three. And you might be asking yourself, why didn't I use envelope number two? And I like to have a different envelope for something like this to really kind of tune it in. Because if it's the same, it kind of doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't really sound as right. So if we have another envelope, might as well use it. So the volume is going to be down all the way at negative 70 dB, but we're going to be using envelope 3 to modulate that at 0.58. So the settings for envelope 3, the attack is at 1 millisecond, decay 46 milliseconds, which you can see is substantially quicker than it is for the second one. And that's because once we strike something, usually the note kind of is longer than the actual strike, right? If you hit a string of a guitar, right, there's a quick little pick sound, and then the string kind of vibrates for a while, and you hear that resonant tone. So that's why this third envelope is a little bit faster on the decay at 46 milliseconds. Sustain is going to be zero, release 100 milliseconds, attack curve, zero, decay curve, negative 5.20. And then over here for the last one, the sub oscillator here, this is going to be on, down two octaves, so really get some low, low end, some hair on this patch here. And this is going direct out, but it's modulated by macro with number three at 0 0.74, 74%, which is going to be this guy down over here. So both of these together, it sounds like this. Now that utility engine is kind of something where we don't really notice it. It's not really a feature, but it's more so a like realistic kind of thing to kind of just make it a little bit nicer, right? So here's without it and with it. And if we really crank it up to really notice this, so right now it's a 0.58. That's where we're kind of going to kind of get right over there. So little values are kind of nice. Just really kind of sneak something like that into your patches. And that's also going to filter number one, as well as this wavetable over here. 
And then for our envelope VCA here, this is basically just kind of controlling the entire sound here. And the attack is gonna be one millisecond, decay is gonna be 95 milliseconds, but this is on a macro, so we're gonna get into that in just a second here. Sustained zero release is gonna be on one, 185 milliseconds, also on a macro, which we're gonna get into. Attack curve at zero, decay curve negative 5.28. So these decay right here. So this first knob here, it's kind of comes default at 0.392, but you can always change the sound of it, right? So just how slow that fades out there. Or you can change it back over here. If you want something kind of like that. Totally up to you how you want to do that here. And then we have the release. So if you kind of want something hanging out for a while. <laughs> so like the wrong note. Oh, good Lord. Okay, so yeah, but that's basically how those two work over here. And then we have that sub here to put a little hair on this batch. I thought it might be a little interesting to have uh, a sub there. And then last is going to be the effects, which we're going to go to after we get to the filter. So really the first one here is going to be the MS-20. Now with something so high endy, there's not really a point to cut off a lot of those, a lot of those frequencies. So I kind of just ran it through my favorite filter because I just love the MS-20. And then this one is also outputting and going into filter number two. And we're just using the multi-mode at a high pass 36, so a very steep cutoff just to really kind of cut off any of that low stuff that we don't really want. Cause you're, I, I was going to say, you're not really have some like low subs in a bell, but we do actually have that here, but it's not going to affect it with this filter here because it's going direct out. So it's bypassing the filters and the effects. So yeah, so let's get into the effects here. So not too crazy. So let's turn off B because this is kind of just more corrective stuff, which we're going to get into. So the first thing that this is going to hit is going to be a delay here. So the, the amount here is going to be zero, but modulated by FX or the FX knob, which is macro four at 19%. The time is going to be one over eight dotted, fine, zero, feedback 0 0.140, stereo with one, high pass frequency 173 hertz, low pass 8,748, and it's going to be on ping pong. Then we have another delay here because two delays are better than one. And then it's going to be one over four for the time. Find zero feedback 0 0.352 stereo with one high pass frequency, 186 Hertz and low pass frequency, 10,312 Hertz. The amount is going to be zero. And then it's going to be modulated at 0 0.20 or 20% from macro number four. Also ping pong. An important part too is, is these filterings here too, right? Because this is such a very high endy plucky, almost kind of in a way irritating sound, but uh, the, the delays are kind of gonna be shaving that off. So we really can tell the difference of the direct sound once we hit the notes and then a lot of the delays that are happening because there are a lot of delays here. And they just bounce around your head like they're frolicking around in a nice grassy field. I mean, this is keys of steel. This is a hard patch. This is this is nasty, right? So like, next up, we have a reverb. Let's turn this guy on here. The amount's going to be zero, right? But it's affected by FX knob here, number four, at an amount of forty percent. So pre-delay, twenty milliseconds. Size kind of small. You know, it just is a little guy. 0.424 decay. 0.482 stereo width. 0.5 high pass. Two hundred hertz. Low pass. Fifteen thousand hertz. And the dampening is at 0.6. So as I mentioned before, the FX Bank B is corrective stuff. So the first thing that's going to hit is this EQ. So really these are, I've kind of just targeted two really annoying sounds because when you're making these type of bell sounds and key sounds, keys of steel, right? There's certain spots in the frequency range that are just very annoying. And once you hit it kind of wrong, it really hurts your ears. So that's kind of why maybe sometimes you're listening to this, you're like, oh God, that was kind of like ugh, irritating, kind of painful. So that's the point of this EQ here. It kind of tames it a little bit. Not as much as we'd like to sometimes that you can cut some more if you'd like to, but really, so we're taking out 7.5 or 7.5 dB. We're taking away from about 5.2 K and the second one over here is going to be targeting at about 553. So these frequencies here, we can always like bring them down a little bit more if you want to, but that's kind of the point of these EQ, this EQ right over here at a, with a tight Q for both of them. 
Next up, we have a compressor, and really this is kind of just containing these keys of steel, right? These are this is a wild patch. It kind of there's spikes and peaks and valleys, and you know who knows what. So this compressor is kind of just holding that down a little bit. So we can kind of play those higher notes, and the compressor kind of just holds it down a little bit. So what we're doing here, the threshold is going to be at negative 12.3 dB, and that's really kind of arbitrary. It really depends on the input signal as far as how much gain reduction you want to get. But really, I'm kind of just going for maybe, I don't really want to pass a negative 5, because we don't, maybe I might be a little bit, but we really just don't want to hear the compressor compressing down too much. We just kind of want to soften it up and kind of keep these bells in check a little bit. They're a little naughty, right? So the ratio is going to be 4.69 over one and then output gain zero. The attack is gonna be 4.87 milliseconds because we really wanna get those transients pretty quick. And the release is 24.7 milliseconds. And full dry wet over here. So really the last thing here is going to be our effects knob, this macro number four, and that's really just controlling the delays and then the reverb. This stuff down here is gonna be left alone and it's kind of just there as corrective stuff like that. And something that's kind of cool as well with this patch too, is you can kind of maybe use this cutoff here if you'd like to. Kind of maybe, maybe around here. Kind of dull it out and then go to the sequencer, turn this on, make this an arpeggio as I already have it selected here. And then maybe just play with the cutoff a little bit. might be a little fun little arp to play with if that's uh, if that's your speed but yeah i kept that off just in case because i didn't really play it that way but that's just something to point out in case you want to do something like that so yeah that was keys of steel if you'd like to get this patch for free there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours so thank you so much for watching hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video